Hello, and welcome back to Guinevere's Battle Arena and to my attempt at beating Dark Souls 3 while playing as an enemy. If you hadn't already guessed from the title, today we'll be playing as the Soul of Cinder. The rules have actually changed slightly since the last time I did this challenge. Since we're playing as the final boss, I've gone ahead and doubled every boss's HP so that we can keep things interesting, otherwise it wouldn't really be much of a challenge, right? I've also given myself access to all of these phantoms, but I'm limiting myself to only bringing three at one time. If any of them die, then they are permanently dead for the remainder of the run and can no longer be used until I start over. Now there are some exceptions to those two rules. For example, when we're fighting Yorm, since he has so much HP and you're meant to actually fight him with the Storm Ruler, I'm allowing myself to bring five NPCs because otherwise that fight would be excruciatingly difficult. Like not even in a Dark Souls difficult kind of way, it's just like kind of a why are you doing this to yourself kind of way. As far as our moveset goes, we have access to most, not all of an enemy's moves while taking control of it. For example, we can't transform mid-fight or anything like that, so we'll be doing all of our fighting in our first phase. The most exciting thing about playing as the Soul of Cinder is that we have access to each of his different sets, the Sword, Pike, Sorcery, and Curved Sword variants, so we'll be rotating through them as necessary to help us overcome each boss fight. With that said, I am really looking forward to bringing you this run and- Hey wait a minute. You're not beating the game. You're just warping into each of the boss rooms and fighting each boss. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm not beating the game in the traditional sense because as far as I know, that is impossible while playing as an enemy. There are a number of blockers standing in the way and the biggest one is that the maps just don't load when you stray too far away from the player character. You see, I haven't replaced my character's model with the enemy or anything, I'm just taking control of them. On top of that, as an enemy, I can't go up ladders, traverse fog walls, or interact with NPCs. Until someone figures out how to do all of that, then this is really the best we have. And if that someone is you, leave a comment below because I would really like to learn. So first up is Gundir, and this fight is just about as easy as you would expect. There isn't really a need for phantoms, so I just go in solo without really much of a plan, and the reason for that is because both of his phases are weak to fire. And as luck would have it, we have Cinder in our name. Not to mention, I am the final boss fighting the first boss, so... Yeah, this was a breeze compared to when I tried to beat the game as Gundir. Nothing special happens and the first boss goes down quickly, and even his Puss of Man face doesn't really pose a threat. On to the next one. Next up is Vort, and he is very resistant to physical damage types and very weak to dark, so I decide to bring Yuria and the Londor Pale Shade since they're both capable of doing dark type damage. We have to be careful though because if they die here then I won't be able to use them for the Dancer fight and they are absolutely necessary for that one since the Dancer is also weak to dark. Without them, I don't even really know if that fight is possible. I added Orbeck to the party just to help support since he can also do magic type damage, but eh, Orbeck is expendable. Honestly, he doesn't even talk to you if your intelligence stat isn't high enough, so no one's really going to miss him if he dies. This is the first fight where I get to try out the sorcery set, and I love it. The fact that I don't have to get close is very helpful, and I can let my phantoms take the brunt of the oppression. I have to make sure to trade off with them though since I do have more HP than them, and if they die then they're permanently gone. Vort's second phase is really scary. We need to make sure we look out for that Frost Breath attack because while the Soul of Cinder is resistant to Frost, he's not invulnerable to it, so we can be Frostbitten, and if we are, we'll move a lot slower than we are now. We managed to make it through this fight without any real issues, well, except the fact that Orbeck is still alive. Damn it, Orbeck. Now we're up against the Crystal Sage, and this fight with doubled HP is a war of attrition. You should, under no circumstances, ever bring magic to this fight because the sage is highly resistant to it, so I bring my heavy hitters, my Aegons, my Alberts, and my Swordmasters. We straight up gank the Crystal Sage until about half HP, which is when he usually teleports away, and the rest of the match is a game of whack-a-mole. My once useful teammates stand in the center of the arena and watch me chase around the sage like a madman. 30 minutes later, we finally win and we're off to an even lengthier fight the Deacons. The Deacons fight is basically Dynasty Warriors, but it's Dark Souls. Enjoy the Deacon ASMR while Horus, Aegon, Albert, and I mow down swaths of this disgusting enemy.
No deacons or phantoms were harmed in the making of this fight. You know, as cool as their armor is, the Abyss Watchers don't hold a candle to the Soul of Cinder. Even with their HP doubled, while their biggest weakness is lightning, they're actually pretty weak to fire too, so we don't really have much to worry about. But that's all about to change in the next few boss fights, so brace yourselves, because after Wolnir, the difficulty of this run spikes. Back to this fight though, they somehow managed to poise break me, and you can see how laughable their damage is. I don't really think I could lose this match even if I tried. The second phase isn't much different. I felt really bad for this little guy because I discovered <laughs> I discovered that this move just stunlocks him. Oh man. Poor guy. This is Wolnir. So I'm on a streak at this point. I haven't lost any phantoms and we managed to keep Yuria and the Pale Shade alive long enough to make it to the dancer fight. My plan for this one was simple. Aegon and I will tank and Yuria and the Shade will dish out dark type damage. I went with the curved sword route because we haven't seen it yet and I figured the speed would help. But basically we need to keep everyone alive for Yorm since these are some of our best phantoms. As you can see, the fight's going pretty well so far. We're doing a good job balancing the aggro between our party members, and no one has gotten torn apart by that spinning attack. Just when we're about to hit the 25% mark, Yuria catches a straight, and we lose our first and most helpful phantom. We can't dwell on it too long, though, because it looks like the dancer wants to take out the Pale Shade next, and we can't let that happen. We need this guy, so Aegon and I step up, and the Shade gets a clutch stagger with that orb, paving the way for us to finish up. This match was tough, but this is just the beginning. When I'm finally done grieving over the late Yuria, I jump into my next fight with the Pontiff, and this time I bring along the Swordmaster to help fill that void. Little does he know he'll never be able to. For the Soul of Cinder, this fight actually isn't too scary. The main thing is that you want to make sure you don't unnecessarily lose teammates here, right? Because the Pontiff has a few moves in his arsenal that'll make short work of your team if you're not careful. Normally you want Sullivan to use the clone because he's very vulnerable during its slow animation and you can kill it and damage him at the same time, but this clone ain't no regular clone. Oh no, his HP is double too, so he still manages to pose a threat. At the end of the day though, we are still the soul of Cinder. He manages to score one cheeky little blow on Aegon before we escort him into the afterlife. Okay, so this match shouldn't be too bad, right? Aldrich is basically a mage, so he's pretty squishy and... Wait a minute! What? The Swordmaster dies frame 1 and I immediately lose about a third of my HP and I'm left with just Gothard and Horus. I brought these guys along because Aldrich is pretty weak to thrust and slash type damage and they're both capable of doing that. He's also weak to fire so on paper we should win this. The thing is though, Aldrich is not meant to have his HP doubled. Like just look at my damage, he's eating it up, he just doesn't care. This entire fight I was focused on getting in as much thrust or fire type damage as possible, but we needed a change of plan. And unfortunately my new plan would not include the Swordmaster because he is dead for the remainder of this run. Gothard and Horus are still alive though, because I died before they did. We'll be able to use them for our next attempt. For attempt 2 the gloves are off, no more games. We know what we're dealing with now and we've brought the absolute Chad Aegon along for the ride. Serious question, this guy slaps your girl's ass, what do you do? The squad is more or less the same with me, Aegon, and Horus up front and Gothard in the back. After some back and forth, Aldrich goes for the arrow move and my first instinct is to run so that I can get the move away from my teammates but he's not even aiming for me. He's aiming for Aegon. And just like that, we lose Aegon for the remainder of the run. Now that I'm watching this back, it just sucks so much because the Prince's fight just became that much more difficult. Aegon is our number one tank, so now we're going to have to rely on Horus. Oh. Horus dies too. Now it's just me and Gothard, and we might actually be able to do this. Aldrich is getting very low. But that's when we get 
poise broken, and then soon after Gothard gets smited by the arrow attack. I do the best I can with my remaining HP, but it's just not enough. Our damage is peanuts compared to what it used to be. So I gear up for another attempt and we try again. All right, third time's a charm. I know I always say this, but we can't afford to lose a single member of this party. Cirrus is our healer, Albert is one of our best damage dealers, and Sigurd wields the Storm Ruler, so if we lose him, then we might as well start over because Yorm becomes impossible. We're really risking it all here. Looking back, Cirrus might not have been the best choice for this attempt since Aldrich resists the Dark Moon Blade spell, but her ability to heal is super valuable. Plus, she's uh, one of my favorites. Between this attempt and the last one, I made a quick stop at the wiki and realized that Aldrich actually takes more damage when you hit his human-like part, so I switched things up a bit and started using this move instead. We got extremely lucky this attempt because we're about two and a half minutes into the fight and Aldrich already hasn't used his arrow attack once, but he proves to us that he doesn't need it because he managed to take out Sirius with his homing soul mass. Albert dies at the three minute mark and Sigurd manages to survive? All right, I think this is a good time to look at our roster. All we have left are Henri, Londor Pale Shade, and Sigurd. Oh, and Orbeck, I guess. And we still have to beat Yorm, the Dragon Slayer armor, the Twin Princes, and myself. The odds are not looking that good, but we might be able to do it if we can get some jolly cooperation out of my remaining phantoms. Let's see how the Yorm fight goes. I did a lot of planning for this fight and came to the conclusion that the sorcery set is the only way you can do this. Yorm is immune to fire and on new game plus 7 with 3 phantoms he has over 115,000 HP. You heard that correctly, 115,000. Obviously we can't use the storm ruler ourselves so we need Sigurd and our team to pull their weight. My plan is to snipe Yorm's head with a crystal soul spear and if I do this enough times he'll kneel like you're seeing here. This lets me and my party get some extra hits in, and if you hit him enough times, he'll fall over like that. So far, this fight is going much better than I thought it would. We've already done about a third of the giant's HP, and I decide to reposition for a few more headshots. Before long, Yorm is already in his second form, and this is where things get scary. Luckily, we resist the fire damage he's capable of doing in the second phase, so you can kind of tank him here. But I accidentally lure him into my teammates, and you can see the impact immediately. The Pale Shade tries to drink an Estus, but he's out. Luckily Orbeck is the first to fall and Yorm manages to bring me down to about 10% of my HP. I snipe him with a soul spear and we decide to stay back this time so I don't die, but that means the Pale Shade ends up getting targeted and his lack of Estus catches up with him. Rest well, King. Just before Yorm can finish me off, we land a soul spear and that marks the end of the Mad Giant. Now it's just me, Henri, and Sigurd. And our next opponent is the Dragon Slayer armor. The first thing you should know about the Dragon Slayer is... Wait, how did he... This can't be happening. No, no! Okay, but seriously, if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and subscribe because I plan on doing this challenge with tons of other bosses and enemies across all three games and you don't want to miss that. If that's too much to ask, then drop a like. It really helps out. I'm just gonna say this now, my Dragon Slayer armor fight is actually bugged, so the angels won't be fighting us. If that bugs you, then sorry. These challenges aren't scientific in any way. I'm just doing them for fun. Just pretend like the angels are shooting lasers. I tested this fight solo twice because I was scared to lose phantoms and I really wanted to see which set was more effective before committing. The Dragon Slayer is basically only weak to strike type damage and none of my sets are capable of doing that while I'm taking control. I decided to just go with my standard set and the sorcery one since those are the ones we've had the most success with so far. I'm mostly just gathering data in these fights. I wanted to see one, how close we could get solo, and two, which moves were most effective. On the left here, I use this attack a lot as the melee set because it has the ability to bypass shields, and if you squint, the Dragon Slayer armor is basically just one big shield. In both fights, we lasted a lot longer than I expected, but it was pretty clear that the sword set came out on top. And as a result, this is the one we brought into the fight. Back to the challenge, the Dragon Slayer armor can do standard, strike, and lightning type damage. And we really don't want to get hit by that last one because as a solo sender, we are the most weak to lightning. 
Despite that, with this fight, I found that it's best to take as much of the aggro as you can, given that the majority of his attacks don't deal lightning damage. But the damage definitely adds up quickly, so be mindful of that. Sigurd gets a sick poise break, but the Dragon Slayer armor is immune to repose, so we just take the extra damage here. We hit a few lightning attacks and our weakness becomes apparent. I decide to back off here because our HP is getting low and we narrowly avoid an attack. Hitting and running is actually a very viable tactic in this one. With our movement speed, we can pull his aggro and give our party members some opportunities to attack, recover, or whatever they need to do. And this is because the Dragon Slayer armor doesn't have the quickest attack or movement speed. Eventually, my HP gets to the point where I can't reliably tank anymore, and yo, Henri steps up. She tanks a few huge hits from the Dragon Slayer that definitely would have killed me, and that allows me to come back in and finish him off. We managed to make it through without losing a single Phantom. Let's fucking go, Henri. According to the wiki, Lorien is weak to magic, so naturally, I bring the sorcery set. The good news for this fight is that well, Lorien's sword is on fire, which means that we resist many of his attacks, especially in the first phase. This means that if you're going to tank him, this is the phase to do it in, because there isn't much magic for us to worry about. My plan is to save as much of my party's health and Estus as possible during this first phase so that they can carry me in the second phase. That brings us to the bad news. He has two phases, and magic isn't as effective on Lothric as it is on Lorien. As I'm sure you already know, the fight only ends when you kill Lothric. I try to support Henri and Sigurd from the back, but I keep managing to pull Lorien's aggro and he teleports over to punish me as I create some distance and as I try to seek refuge behind this pillar, he teleports in, poise breaks me, and then finishes me off in style. Bravo Lothric. Bravo. Luckily I died before any of my party did, so I'll be able to bring both of them back for attempt number two. In this attempt, I'm sticking with the same plan, but this time I'm going to retreat sooner so I don't die again. After a lot of back and forth, we eventually make it to phase 2 with a decent amount of HP left. I lock on a Lothric and unload everything that I have, since this might be the only chance that I get. If either of these two die, then it's highly unlikely that I'll be able to finish this fight with just one Phantom. Sigurd appears to be taking a beating, but for the most part, my team is hanging in there. They tag me in, and we manage to get a lucky poise break on Lothric, and right before he dies, we lose Henri, and... I gotta be honest with you, this one hurt. Henri has definitely proven herself this run and I can't wait to fight with her again in future ones. Once I finally kill Lorien, I... Wait, where is Sigurd? When did he even die? Watching this footage back, I can't even pinpoint the exact moment when he died, he just kind of disappeared. In any case, there's no way we're gonna be able to take out the rest of Lothric's HP and that's the end of the run. Even though we didn't win, we almost made it to the Soul of Cinder and I had a lot of fun. I definitely think it's possible to beat the game as the Soul of Cinder. If I could change one thing about how I approach this one, it would be... LOL. Next time you should try getting good you filthy casual. Subscribe to the channel or you'll end up like that guy.